Here I'm going to demonstrate that the two processes mentioned in the title always result in zero, regardless of the scalar function or the vector field involved. Let's start with the first one, the curl of the gradient. Let's give ourselves a function, a scalar function, phi. We'll assume it depends on x, y and z. I want to take its gradient, so that's a matter of applying the vector operator del. Now the result is a vector, which means we could, if we wanted, take its curl. That's the cross product with del again. Now already on looking at the structure of that expression, we could almost guess that it ought to be zero, because after all we know that the cross product of a vector with itself is always zero. And it looks like what we've got here is del cross del. The trouble is that that del in the middle is acting on a function phi. So probably we should not assume that it's obvious that this thing is zero. We won't be surprised when it does turn out to be zero, but we did ought to check it. OK, here we go. First of all, let's write down del phi. It's the vector d phi by dx phi by dy, d phi by dz, and then to take the curl of that vector, we make the usual structure with the determinant i, j, and k. In the middle we put the differentiation instructions, and at the bottom the components, but this time the components are of the vector grad phi, and those are d phi dx, d phi dy, d phi by dz. This is a determinant with i, j and k across the top, so as always we'll have brackets multiplied by i, j and k. As usual, the sign alternates, plus minus plus. Beginning with the i term, we need to do d by dy acting on d phi dz. That's going to make d2 phi by dy dz. And then minus and d by dz acting on d phi dy. So that's d2 phi dz dy. That's the i part. Let's get rid of the arrows so we don't get too cluttered. And look at the j part. Now we need to do d by dx acting on d phi dz. That's d2 phi by dx dz. And subtract d by dz acting on d phi dx. Get rid of the arrows and finish off with the k part, and that's d by dy acting on d phi dx minus d by dx acting on d phi dy. Just for neatness, we get rid of the arrows the last time. Okay, now let's look at the structures in the brackets. The order of the differentiation is opposite. dy dz or dz by dy. In the second bracket, dx dz and dz dx. But one of the properties of mixed second derivatives is that for most functions, and there are very few exceptions, those derivatives are actually equal. The order we do them really doesn't matter. As a result, we can cross out the first and the second and the third bracket because we're subtracting one thing from itself. That gives us an answer which is the zero vector. So we can conclude that the curl of the gradient of the function phi is zero and remember we never actually said what phi was so that result is true for all functions phi. doesn't matter what phi is. Let's move on and do the second part of the title. Here we want the 
divergence of the curl. Curl is a vector product. So let's start by giving ourselves a vector v, depending on x, y, and z, and taking its curl, and then do the divergence of that quantity. That's the dot product with del again. This one perhaps is not quite so obvious that it should be zero, but we could remember a result that we might or might not have seen before, and that is that when we do a triple product involving the dot with two of the vectors the same, such a scalar triple product can always be reordered by permuting the vectors around. So we can shift the b round to the front and take the a inside. So we get b dot a cross a. But a cross a, of course, is 0 again. So this triple product is 0. Now we can't really do that shuffling around with the divergence of the curl of v, because it's not quite clear what it would mean to have v on the left and del dot, sorry, del cross del inside. However, this property of the triple product does suggest that what we're looking at here with these differential operators might also be zero. Let's check it. First of all, let's write down the curl of v. Normally we'd write this out using a determinant, but I'm just going to write down the answer. I'm sure you'll recognize the structure. Here it is. The curl looks like this. I've here assumed that v has components v1, v2, v3, of course, and that each of those components individually depends on x, y, and z. So in principle, all of the derivatives shown here might be non-zero. You can see the structure that's come from expanding the determinant with the usual i, minus j, and k, and the structures in the brackets from taking the 2 by 2 subdeterminants. Now let's apply the divergence to this quantity. So div of curl v. It's going to be a bit long and messy, but we have to do d by dx of the first component. And then we have to add, but there's a minus there, and it's d by dy of the second component. And then finally, plus d by dz of the third component. So I now need to do all the differentiations, expanding the brackets as I go. So that gives me d2v3 by dx dy minus d2v2 by dx dz minus d2 v3 by dy dx plus d2 v1 by dy dz and then finally plus d2 v2 by dz dx minus d2 v1 by dz dy and now we remember once again that the order in which we do the differentiations is immaterial. x first, then y, or y first, then x. And so we can cancel these terms in pairs. First of all, there's the one with the v3 that gets differentiated with respect to x and y in opposite orders, but it's subtracted, and so the terms cancel. Then there is the differentiation involving v2, and that's 2v2 by dz dx and dx dz, so they cancel. And then finally the one involving v1, and sure enough those also cancel. Result, scalar number 0. We have shown that, hmm, what have we shown? The divergence of the curve.
curl of a vector field V is always zero and that's for all vector fields V. I shall conclude there. Well, actually not quite because I'd like to throw out a challenge. What about the curl of the curl? That's grad cross grad cross V. I'll give you a head start. This one is not zero. It is a vector. Because after all it's primarily a curl of something, a cross product. I'm going to do that in another maths cast. You might like to have a go at it yourself first.